Okay, uh, welcome back to the second session. Let's go ahead and share my screen and go get started. Great, uh, just to continue from where we uh, left off in the last class. Um, so one of the basis for uh, ministering in divine healing is, um, is this, is the Spirit's power, knowing that everything what Jesus did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are anointed to minister just like Jesus. And that's where we stopped in the last session. And I hope you all can see my screen. Just a couple more scriptures before we uh, continue. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 33, it says, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. He poured out. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Amen. Um, and in, again, once again, uh, please forgive me for sounding uh, redundant, but in, in chapter one, uh, we see that there were two things uh, that we, again, you know, that Jesus operated in. One is, again, he was anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, he was anointed with the sonship glory. And these same two things have been given to us. And so one of the key points going back to the beginning of this course, one of the key points is that every believer can do this. Right? Every believer can do this. And the basis of that claim or that argument simply means because we have been given the same Holy Spirit that, that, anointed, that, was, that Jesus was anointed with. Okay, The Holy Spirit is also the giver of life. Uh, he is the spirit of life. And we see that in Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Um, we must believe, receive, and walk in the power of the Spirit within us as believers. We must believe, receive, and walk in the power of the Spirit within us as believers. While there are many aspects of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, we recognize that the Spirit of God imparts life to our mortal bodies. Okay, Romans 8, 11 says, but if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Isn't that powerful, isn't it? And he will give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Okay, so um, he quickens uh, he quickens our bodies, he quickens our spirit. Uh, and in the last section, we saw that uh, he increases, he renews our strength. He increases our longevity and, and increases our vitality of our bodies, right? And, and it's the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in us, who gives life to this mortal body until we put on immortality, and as it says in 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, and moving on. Another basis for ministering healing and deliverance um, is the name of Jesus. Okay, it's the name of Jesus. Right? In the kingdom of God, God works through the power of divine authorization or delegation. Okay, in the kingdom of God, God works through the power of divine authorization and delegation. Okay? The Lord Jesus came in the Father's name. During his earthly ministry, the Lord Jesus authorized and delegated his disciples to go in his name and minister on his behalf. Okay, it's very important. Right? During his earthly ministry, the Lord Jesus authorized and delegated his disciples. That's what you guys said in the beginning about the Great Commission as well, isn't it? Which we'll again look in, in, in the next page as we go on. So the disciples understood the power vested in them through delegation and went out confidently to heal and deliver them. Okay, all Jesus said was, okay, I give you the authority. 
go ahead and see what it says in Luke chapter 10, um, verse 1, 17 and 19. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Um, there's so much of uh, depth in that scripture and what, uh, what the book is trying to say here. Is we all understand authority in, in different aspects, in different perspectives, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm sure if, if someone in higher authority than you says, okay, go ahead and do this in my name, I'll give you authority or uh, say, okay, you know, Sid, you have my permission to take everybody in class for an excellent lunch somewhere, whatever. It's going to take them. You're not going to just sit and say, okay, you know, just keep dreaming about it and say, okay, oh, wow, yeah, this is what he said. This is what Roshan said. Okay, I can do this. You're not going to sit and do nothing about it, isn't it? Because everybody else in class is going to give you. I say, okay, <laughs> this is what sir said and you didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? It can't be like that, isn't it? But but just to know that we've been given this authority and when we don't act on it, it's like having a blank check and not and cashing it. Right? We've been given this blank check with, with this stamp with his signature on it. And it's it's it comes down to us, um, you know, for us to put it to use. You know? Um, so it says uh, John 14, 13 it says, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mark 17, Mark chapter 16 and 17 and 18 says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. Okay. Um, some of us, again, another key point is <clears throat> it's, it's not the process or the method, but it is in the person. Remember that, right? It's not in the process or methods. It's not just in the laying of the hands or not laying of the hands, um, but it is in the person of Jesus, isn't it? And so this is a classic example here. I let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. And some of us can tend to get fixated on this one thing, okay, oil, okay, which oil? Coconut oil, almond oil, coconut oil, oil from Jerusalem, <laughs> etc., etc. Uh, doesn't matter. It does not matter, right? In some places, uh, you know, when we go on mission trip, I've heard pastors tell story, okay, they don't necessarily have oil to give. They use the water. Right, uh, it's it's just not, it's not the method or the process. But see what it says after that. Okay, I'm anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That should stand out to us, isn't it? Right. So when we use the name of Jesus, we are standing there in His place. Let that sink in. When we use the name of Jesus, we are standing there in his place. And so when we say, 
said, hey, we are gathered together in the name of Jesus. Okay? We are all meeting together in the name of Jesus. That means that meeting should look like one of those meetings in Jesus' days as if Jesus was there. Are you guys with me? Right? His name is not just a way to end our prayer. Okay. Oh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's move on with life. My gosh. His name is so much more than just ending a prayer. Right? So when we use the name of Jesus, we are standing there in his place. We are an ambassador. We become an ambassador. We are representing, or if you break that word, we are representing him. We are representing him and acting on his behalf. Amen. Uh, I think from this, the famous tagline was born, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Right? Um, <clears throat> so there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we've been given that authority. Uh, let's just go on. You know, there's one more scripture. And we'll continue. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. And therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth. And that Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Um, how many of us realize that there is no escaping this? That there is no escaping this truth. That one day every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right? right? And, he's, and he's been given the name above every other name. And so when we use the name of Jesus, we are essentially acting in the highest authority available. We are acting in the name that is greater than any other name. It is in the authority of that mighty name that we expect sickness to bow, demons to flee, and people to be healed and delivered. Amen. Uh, this time, I will also recommend uh, another APC publication that for you to read is uh, a book on the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, um, another, I, I'll share the link later but if I can find it, but it's it, you can download it for free off our website. Um, but yeah, so that's the basis for ministry, healing, and deliverance. Uh, one of the basis is the name of Jesus, knowing that we've been given the authority, or we have the blank check to go about ministering divine healing to the sick uh, and deliver them from every oppression, from demonic position, etc., etc., whatever it is. You and I are called to do that because we carry his name. Amen. There's, I forget the chapter in, in the book of Acts. Uh, forgive me. Um, it's, it, is, it is the time where Saul is blind. You know, he encounters Jesus in all his glory and he's blind for three days. But during that time, God is speaking to Ananias and he says, on this day, I want you to go and meet this person, Saul. And Ananias is very scared. He said, okay, I don't want to go meet him. He's a murderer. What if he puts me in jail? I'm scared. But God says, I have chosen him to carry my name. Isn't that wonderful? I have chosen him to carry my name and then what Paul goes on to do uh, for the rest of history is, is just beyond amazing, isn't it? Um, and thanks, John. <laughs> and similarly, you and I are called to carry his name. I think about every brand that is out there in the world right now. Uh, you know, all of that company wants you to carry their name. Be it Nike or Adidas, Reebok, whatever brand you can think of, anything, right? So it's like, oh, there's a certain set of thing that goes with, okay, you drive a certain car with a certain brand, there's a value to it. Right? If you wear a, a clothing of a certain brand, there's another value to it. 
you get what I'm saying? And we need to realize that you and I, we carry the name of Jesus. And that, that should mean something. Amen? Right? Okay, so I hope that's encouraging. Let's move on. Uh, and another basis for ministering healing and deliverance is faith. Faith in God is essential when ministering healing and deliverance. Okay, faith in God is essential when ministering healing and deliverance. When the disciples of Jesus, uh, you know, they, they went out, just to paraphrase it, um, they come back saying they were disappointed. Why were we not able to cast out this devil? And Matthew, you know, he says in 17, 19, 21, when the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And so Jesus said to them, simply, plainly, because of your unbelief. And for surely, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, this time does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Okay. Uh, he just responds to them very simply. He says, because of your unbelief, because uh, we did not believe. And how many scriptures in the past we have seen, okay, if you just believe, if you believe, if you believe, you will be able to do this. Okay, every believer, we are called believers, isn't it? it? means we believe in something and we should, and we should act like we believe in something. Um, right? Okay. Um, Acts chapter 3, verse 16, it says, And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Okay? Um, and his name, through faith in his name. Um, Galatians 3, 5 says, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. Um, and just one last scripture from James chapter 5, 14 and 15. James chapter 5. Um, I'll read it for us. I'll read from verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13 onwards, all the way to 15. It says, Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone unhappy? Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. Amen. And if he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Um. I just finished 16 as well. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective. Okay, in verse 15 it says, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Um, amen. Um, so there is, power, there is power in faith and we also see that uh, faith for personal healing and deliverance and how Jesus always acknowledged that when it comes to Roman centurion. Now, when you read this part of what happens in Matthew 8, 13, everything that we've studied so far, right, from the word of God, right, and how there's power, and how there's power in declaring and confessing. Um, and it's amazing what the Roman centurion says, Lord, you don't have to come, just say it. Because his authority, I, I, I myself am a man in authority, so I know the power that my word or my command carries. And in response to that, Jesus is awe. You know, he's in awe. I said, okay, your great faith, okay, be a good cheer, daughter. Uh, you know, and again, the next uh, instance there, how Jesus acknowledges the person's faith. Said, your faith has made you well. In Matthew 9, 29, according to your faith, let it be to you. 
to the Canaanite woman, he says, Oh woman, great is your faith. Okay. Um, faith enables us to step out um, and minister to people. Okay. Uh, popularly known is faith is spelled as risk, R I S K. Okay. Stepping out in faith. Okay. Everybody, you know, all of us have that uh, fear. I mean, is okay. What if I pray and this person doesn't get healed? Doesn't matter. Okay, that's the you know you 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 step out in faith. In other words, you step out and you take that risk. You pray for the people, right? Um, I'm not sure if you know this person called Todd White. Uh, Todd White is um, one of the evangelists who who does a lot of street evangelism, uh, and he says. That, he had to pray for at least 90 odd people for him to even see the first healing. And now, you know, he goes and prays for people on the streets and people are healed. And what, and what if he had stopped at number five because of disappointment? Okay, I prayed it didn't happen. What if he had stopped at number 20 or 30 or 90? And so he said he had to pray for 90 odd people for him to even start seeing the first miracle. Um, and so, Faith equips us, empowers us, you know, uh, to step out and take that risk and go and, and, and minister divine healing. Amen. Um, and the next basis for ministering healing and deliverance is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And we see in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, it says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, uh, look at this scripture. It says, the first verse, I say to you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates shall not prevail against it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, a simple question, which is not a tricky question. Uh, does the gate move or is it in one place? Is it stationary? Simple question. Gates don't move, yeah. isn't it? I They're think it don't move. It just, it just open and close, but it doesn't move. Yes. Right? But gates were, in again, in the days of the Bible and, you know, prior to that, the gates were like the stronghold of a city. It was like the, the control center of the city. Okay, and it's always there, like Isaac said, it just opens and closes. Okay, but gates doesn't move places. But what is Jesus saying here when he says that, okay, I, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but first he says, I will build my church on this and the gates shall not prevail. That means, hey, we as a church, we are to take the fight to the devil. For far too long, we are complacent. We are very, you know, in our comfort, uh, you know, with whatever we are doing. It's like we have to advance. And one of the things that the Bible says is the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent takes it by force. This talks about our hunger and a desire to see the kingdom of God invade, uh, right? In the kingdom, Remember, kingdom is always is, is two words, isn't it? King and dominion. So every time king comes, he comes with his dominion. And a kingdom of God is the kingdom of power, as we learned in chapter one. So you just you can go there and recap. Um, and and ask yourself these questions: In the kingdom of God, is there sickness? Is there tears? Is there is there pain? Is there shame? Is there bondage? Is there oppression? No, because God is our king. And as we learned, he is not the source of any of the sicknesses, right? 
He is perfect. He made us perfect. And so when we bind sicknesses on earth, it is bound in heaven. Right? When we release healing on earth in the name of Jesus, the healing is released in his kingdom and his kingdom comes over the people that we pray for. Amen? And so as the sons of the kingdom, we are here to forcefully advance the kingdom of God and overthrow the works of darkness. Can I read that one more time? Okay. As the sons and daughters of the kingdom, we are here to forcefully advance the kingdom of God and overthrow the works of darkness. Overthrow the works of darkness. Right? It's such a beautiful metaphor when you read in, in the Old Testament, in Exodus, uh, you know, the first five books. One of the commandments that was given to the Israelites was, you go into the land that I have promised, you chase your enemies away. You don't, you, you don't compromise with them and live with them. Because if you do, you will start living like them. You will start worshipping the gods that they are worshipping. Okay, your, your style of worship will change. Your, your gods will change. Everything will change. Right? But this, that's exactly what they did not do. The Israelites went into the promised land. Joshua leads them. Generation after generation after generation. They would lead a certain bunch of people, but they will, be, they will always let another group of people just stay there. Because of which... Because they did not drive their enemies away from their land, years later, the same enemies that they let them be stay with them will oppress them. And you can read all over it in the book of Judges uh, and whatnot, right? Um, and that's the recurring theme in the Old Testament. And so here, we are encouraged to do the same. It's like, if there's any area in your life, in your family's life, uh, in your city, whatnot. We are not called to compromise and live with the enemy. We are called to take the fight to the enemy and chase the powers of darkness because we've been given that authority as sons and daughters. Amen? And so finally, kingdom authority and power flows through us as we minister healing and deliverance. Kingdom authority and power flows through us as we minister healing and deliverance. Amen. Are you guys with me? Yeah, do, you, do you all realize that the power that's, that we've been uh, trusted with? Amen. Okay, and finally, the, the last basis of for ministering healing and deliverance is a commission. Okay, just like all of you said in the beginning, okay, because it's a great commission. Right? The, the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs, wonders, and miracles. And we have been commissioned to do so. Just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. It says in John 20, 21. Right? And it's actually it's a repeated uh, in the previous chapter in John 17 as well. Okay, just as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, we have been sent with the same mandate and mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it says commission. I mean, it's, it's again two words. Okay, we co mission. It's a co mission, right? We are co partnering, co laboring with God on this mission, right? He is with us in, 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 in everything that we do, right? Uh, and and we see that in John chapter in one John chapter three eight it says for this reason uh, Jesus came. What does it say? For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. Okay, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? If, if Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, then we have been commissioned to do the same. Right. Are you guys with me? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Isaac. Great. Uh, so just a couple more points, and then we will end today's session. 
Um, and so everything that we've covered so far, okay, before we continue, uh, and the page 55, so quickly, all the, all the basis for ministering of healing and deliverance, we've, we've looked at that it's the nature of God, okay, it's in his nature to heal, to see his children uh, whole, um, the cross, the power of the cross, of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we were justified on the cross, he died for our sins, he took our sicknesses. The word of God, God works and moves and creates through his word, in his word. The power of God is resident in his word. We saw that. And then the next basis for ministering, healing and deliverance is the spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's power. The same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus is being available to you and me for us to move with them. And then we have the authority in the name of Jesus. We, we carry that name and faith, the kingdom of God, and it is our mission. Okay. Um, so actually, what, what I would like to do now is, uh, i just stop here quickly. We have all this basis uh, of understanding to move in healing and deliverance. We see one, we have the name of Jesus as our authority. We have the word of God. And then we, we are encouraged and equipped to move in faith. And, and, as, and as the people of his kingdom, we are asked to advance. And when we do, when we take the fight to the enemy, the gates of hell will not prevail. It cannot win against us. Amen. So knowing all of that, uh, what I would like to do is just spend just a few minutes in prayer like we did last class. Okay. Um, amen. So uh, today specifically, uh, I want us to pray for the cities that we are from. Okay, very quickly, very quickly, in the chat section, go ahead and just type the city that you are from. Come on, come on, send it, send it. Let's pray for our cities. Can we do that now? Can we do that? Can we pray for the cities? Are we going to pray for the kingdom of God to invade our land? Amen. I mentioned this before, in, in, in the book of Jonah, uh, it's very famously known only for the Jonah and the whale story, but the last line of the book of Jonah says, uh, where God responds to Jonah and says, should I not have compassion and mercy over this great city of Nineveh, right? Um, and so with every city that is mentioned here, we know that uh, you know, God is filled with compassion for that land. That you are from, Amen. Um, anyway, so uh, and I want you to pray for your land right now, and with all of us are going to agree and say Amen. Amen. So you know the condition of the city that you are in, whatever it is. Uh, okay, why don't you very quickly, okay, and this because I mean short of time, just quick two minutes of prayer, just release that prayer and kingdom of God over your city, and all of us are going to say an amen to that. Okay? Can we do that, class? Can we do that, guys? What do you think? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Um, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Anita, why don't you uh, just pray for Karwar and we will all agree with you. Let's go. All right, class, can we agree with Anita as she prays for her city, Karwar? Can we do that? Yes, Pastor. I'll, I'll pray quickly. Um, Let's go. Yeah. Father God, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord, as we come before your throne of grace, Lord. We ask the blessing over my city, Kawa, Lord, as you placed us in this city, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you for everything that you do for our city, Lord. I declare Amen. your kingdom over this city, Lord. Amen. As we all are praying for the revival, for the uh, revival in our city, Lord, as a church, as a team now, we are praying. Amen. We bless the, de declare, <laughs> declare the blessing Amen. over the city, Lord. Thank you yes, for... Sir. Thank you for the city, Lord. Thank you for the people of people uh, in the city, Lord. I ask blessing and I ask each each uh, the bondage and the whatever it is there, Lord, to uh, whatever the storm storm goes are there, Lord, to break in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I ask the blessing over all the city, Lord. Thank you. In yeah. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, Sir, why don't you pray for New Delhi, and we will pray. I agree with you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord, as we are praying for the national capital of India, Lord, we are praying for New Delhi, Lord. We pray for all the political, Lord, all the politicians, Lord, all the leaders, Lord, who are, Lord, we pray for the city, Lord, whatever the development is going on, Lord, whatever the decisions are being taken in the parliament, Lord, whatever the journey is going up, whatever the prosecution is happening in the state of Delhi, Lord, Lord, it should be, Lord, give the guidance to the politicians, Lord, Lord, whatever the decisions, Lord, whatever the laws are we made, New Delhi, Lord, which are implementing the nation of India, Lord. Lord, we need your wisdom, Lord. We need your yeah. guidance, Lord. Whatever that is happening in New Delhi, Lord, whatever the COVID situation, Lord, whatever the current situation, Lord, nothing is hidden from you, Lord. We pray for the nation of Delhi, we pray for the nation of India, and we pray for all the cities, Lord, which has been enlisted, Lord, what, from wherever the places we are, Lord. We give all glory to your, to you, Lord, and we give everything in your hands, Lord. Do as our Lord what pleases to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, Vishesh, you are a for partner. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again we come to your presence. Lord, we thank you so much for our city. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you hear when, Lord, when we pray, Master. Lord, we ask for peace. Lord, we ask that, Lord, let you will be done in and through our city, Lord. Yeah. Let these people come closer to you, Lord. Let these people know you, that you are the only God, Lord. Lord, I pray for the leaders, all the rulers, Lord. Uh, bless them, Lord, so that they will uh, get the strength, Lord, from you to lead this uh, uh, state, Lord. We thank you so much for hearing us. Jesus, and I pray. Amen. 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 All right, for Kohima. All right, everybody is saying amen, right, guys? Hallelujah. Father, I come before your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. I lift up my spirit for him unto you. In the name of Jesus, I come every spirit of lawlessness, every spirit of corruption in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for divine protection of our land. I pray for unity among every tribal uh, tribes in black land. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for our chief minister and all the cabinet minister that their hearts will not harden, but they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and they will rule our land according to the wisdom of God. And Lord, I pray for revival of our land, Lord, just like you would in the 50s and 60s, Lord God. Mighty revival in our land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That Lord Jesus, our churches in Nagaland and in Kohima, they will not be lukewarm, but they will arise and shine for your glory, and they will be the salt and light wherever they go, Lord. I pray and I bless our land, oh, and I thank you for the city of Kohima, Lord. I pray for a divine protection, Lord. Every demonic strongholds, every territorial spirit which is oh, hindering our uh, uh, city, Kohima, I cancel that in Jesus' name, Lord. There will be mighty awakening that the fear of of God will grieve the hearts of our people and they will repent from all their lawlessness and they will hunger for you. They will be passionate about you, about you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I bless my city in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Joy, let's go for Bogota. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this city. I want to thank you today because you have plans for every single person here, Lord. 
I ask you, Lord, that you rise all the sons and daughters that you have placed in the last days, Lord, and that you pour your spirit over the whole city, Lord, so that they Lord. walk in honor to you, Lord, and that everything that people do here, Lord, honors your name. And there's no one, Lord, from the old and the young, that they just praise your name in everything they do, Lord. I ask you for every single person that is so lost right now, that you bring your spirit to bring clarity for what they have to live, for what they have to believe, for what they have to walk, Lord. I ask you for every single baby that is born in today, that Amen. you bring them a purpose, Lord, since today until the end, that they walk this land as sons and daughters of God, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you put your authority over this city and that you can cleanse it and that this city will be the city of the Holy Spirit, Lord. That we can just like act like the Holy Spirit wants us to act. Lord, I ask you that every single person will give up on his flesh and give their hearts to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, John. Ruben, uh, let's wait for Gang to talk. Father, I come to your throne in the name of Jesus and I pray for my city. I thank you for my city. I declare your blood over my city, Father God. Thank you for yes. Thank you for the love that is on the, in this city, Father, and especially I pray, Lord, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord, Father God. Every demonic stronghold in this city, in the name of Jesus, I spill your blood, Father God, that you would free people from the religious world, and I pray that your love will overpower us, Lord, that your love will take over this city, your love and kingdom shall take over this city lord your kingdom come your will be done over my city yes, lord. Father. yes for god. every people every every tribe every every tribe every people lord that we will see your divine kingdom come lord and we will see revival rising, lord, revival rising from each and every church each and every house lord that we will see the kingdom in jesus name i pray amen mm -hmm. thank you Ruben. okay uh, john uh, Father, we pray for the city of Ernakulam. Lord, we thank you for the city. We declare your name upon the city, O oh Lord, and we, as a team, O oh God, we declare your victory. Let uh, uh, We ask for your presence to move in the city of Ernakulam and Cochin in the name of Jesus. We pray for all the churches, O oh God, and we declare that the churches will thrive even in this difficult season where churches are not able to open. Lord, we pray and we ask, O oh God, that your word will pass through, Lord Jesus, and the gates of hell, gates of hell shall not overpower it, Lord Jesus. And that, so that's what you reminded us today, God. And we continue to declare there will be revival, that the wind of your revival blow in the land, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We pray, O oh God. Jesus for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the city of Arnaculum and Cochin in the name of Jesus. We thank you for doing that, Lord Jesus. We thank you that people will rise up. We thank you for new leaders to rise up. We thank you for the administrations to work properly. We thank you that um, you have done a great and mighty work. In the city, Lord Jesus. We praise you, God. In thank Jesus' you. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, Isaac, would you like to go ahead and pray for your city? Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, who come before your throne. Your word said, except you watch the city, the watchman watches in vain. Father, Lord, watch over our mm -hmm. cities, especially my small city, Freetown. Our uh, inhabitants of the cities are all, almost all Britain enslaved by the power of the darkness. Yeah. Prostitution, alcoholism, Father, Lord, we want to remove these things from their hearts. We pray that your spirit enter their hearts, that they will come under the light. We pray for the churches in the city, that they will be revitalized and come against all evil that is enslaving our brothers and sisters in the city. Father, Lord, we ask this for your masses. We ask that your banner will be lifted in our cities, that our cities will become more peaceful. Father Lord, the leaders will pray for them so that they will rule with a sense of justice. 
Amen. Corruption will not be part of their portion Amen. so that they will not Amen. enslave our people. Father Lord, yes, we Lord. ask yes, this Lord. and all other mercies in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, all right, finally for Nigeria, now to be over, would you just be in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this land. We thank you for our country. We bless your name. We say be that exalted in Jesus' name. I commend my time. You will in Ocean State, Nigeria, into your hand. Father, let your light shine more and more in this land in Jesus' name. We know that this land is for men, it's made for Muslims. And we are here to strive, O Lord, to win souls for your kingdom, Father. Yeah. Grace to win more souls for your kingdom. Give it to us in Jesus' name. And let your light shine in this line more and more in Jesus' name. Win people to your kingdom in Jesus' name. And let Christians strive more and more in this land in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering my prayer. I commend the country as a whole into your hand. Take absolute control of the government of this country in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering my prayer in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 guys. Um, amen, amen. I just want to encourage us all. I was just reminded as we were praying, you know, this again familiar passage from Second Chronicles seven fourteen it says, "If my people, who are called by my name, right, we learned about His name and the authority that we all carry. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray." I will hear from heaven, and he says, I will heal their land. I will heal their land, right? So um, just a reminder and encourage that ministering divine healing is not just for individuals, but it's also for the city and for the nations. Amen. Uh, so I want to encourage you to um, you know, just take the fight with the devil. Pray uh, for your nation, for your city, um, and God will heal our lands. Amen. Because he is filled with compassion for our city. Amen. So, uh, it was wonderful. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, I hope you learned something today. Um, I'll go ahead and stop the recording and uh, I'll see you all once again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Have a good week. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Pastor.